We're here with Shmuley Galansky, the head of uh, innovation programs at uh, Rafael's Land and Naval Division. Um, would you like to give us a little rundown of uh, the main challenges facing armored fighting vehicles on the modern battlefield as Rafael sees it? I think that the, the last years we are uh, seeing a kind of a change in the main role of armored vehicle in the, in the field. For many years we knew that the armored vehicle is to, its the main goal is to move the infantry from one place to another to, to let them be a mechanized maneuver. And the other role was to carry a very heavy caliber uh, gun that will bring a huge lethality into the field. I think that uh, with the uh, ch changes that we have today, first in the challenges of uh, urban terrain, elusive enemy, the fact that we need to control the damage and make uh, sure that we will not make a collateral damage, and on the other hand, uh, new technologies that are coming from uh, electro-optical sensors, uh, 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 artificial intelligence that can uh, calculate data in a very uh, heavy uh, amount of information that, uh, and uh, decision making. I think that those changes uh, change dramatically the role of the armored vehicle from its origin to be a system that carry variety of capabilities from the origin one that it was survivability and lethality into a new capabilities of uh, fusion sensors decision making and uh, be able to attach variety of capabilities to the ground maneuver like uh, drones and uh, uh, artillery and air force everybody is attached to the to the uh, ground maneuver and the center of it is the fact that uh, the a armored vehicle can carry a lot of uh, energy, a lot of computerized capabilities, and he can be a center in the in the in this uh, arena and uh, connect all the capabilities as uh, the big system that runs the, and operate all the capabilities. And for you guys, this system is called Fireweaver, correct? It's 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 many uh, uh, systems. Fireweaver is is uh, basically a common language between sensors and shooters that connect capabilities. It's uh, uh, between the vehicle itself and the other players around him, other armored vehicle or uh, fire and uh, air force and naval capabilities that can work for him. But uh, the the technologies that the main technologies of Fireweaver. First is the what we call match guide is the fact that we can tie the live vision of the optical sensor over 3D model and by that have a very precise common language between the players for every position in the world. The fact that we can uh, uh, manipulate the data and control the flow of the data and the fact that uh, the, the network will not be blocked from uh, overload of data. And the third level of technology is the, 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 to help the commander in his decision making to make sure that uh, he calculate variety of uh, an, um, a big amount of data and need to make a very quick decisions and very precise decisions in variety of capabilities that he can never be professional in all of them like I was in tanks and we need to support him with this decision and the AI capabilities and uh, uh, smart advanced algorithms can uh, help him to make the best decision to to attach the best uh, effect to the be best uh, to the every target that he need to uh, uh, engage in the field. Recently, you carried out uh, trials of the Raphael suite for armored vehicles on the M113 test bed last summer. Um, what did you find in these trials um, regarding the challenges of autonomous driving, which is one of the capabilities the suite offers? Uh, as you say, we demoed the Carmel suit uh, last uh, summer in uh, North Israel. We had to demo how do we operate uh, a M113 vehicle with two operators with the heads inside. Uh, we start uh, first with their situation awareness that you can see here uh, how with uh, panoramic 360 degrees uh, uh, transverse cockpit uh, we gave them the best situation awareness, even better. Their understanding was, was that they have a better situation awareness that what they used to have as a tank commanders with the head outside. But the uh, second uh, challenge that we had to deal with is the fact that we have only two crew members. And to support them and uh, uh, handle a variety of, of uh, uh, tasks that need to be done in the, in the vehicle, 
we developed the uh, artificial intelligence crew member, which is actually a robotic system that know how to do uh, the different uh, roles of, of the crew members and to make sure that the two human crew members and the robotic crew members share the, the tasks in the best performance uh, according to the uh, operational situation. Uh, the first thing we dealt with was the driving. Uh, we understood that driving takes about 85% of the tent of the human being. So if we will need to have one of the operators as a driver, we will never be able to handle all the other uh, uh, tasks of the crew. So we developed the uh, uh, artificial intelligence driver that actually choose the best route of uh, moving the vehicle uh, by itself autom automatically. And he is uh, uh, controlling his, uh, his driving by fusion uh, variety of uh, sensor, uh, LIDAR, electro-optical and others into one coherent driver vision that will allow him to understand uh, to detect the obstacles in front of him and understand what will be the best way to bypass the obstacle or what will be the best new route to take according to the mission that was told by the commander. And uh, we felt very good with it. We felt that we get a, a level of autonomy of driving that was uh, very uh, satisfied, that we were very satisfied with. And we felt that most of the time, the, the human crew members felt free from driving the vehicle, of course, uh, in a simple uh, 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 parts of the phases of the, of the operation, like going to the village. And much further, when they were inside the village and they have 360 degrees uh, threats around them, and they were free from driving and they were, were able to focus in attacking the enemy and, and the vehicle just drive by itself. You've spoken about some of the advantages of having a reduced crew. But many Western countries for a long time have been against reducing crew sizes on their vehicles. Uh, one of the main reasons they cite for this is it's easier to perform maintenance of a vehicle when you have a larger crew. What has your experience with the Carmel project shown in this regard? Are there any challenges like this that you have found? Since the Carmel project was more uh, technology oriented and we uh, didn't, uh, and we understand that uh, the platform that uh, will be used as technologies will probably won't be the M113, which is the old lady, uh, we didn't focus on the specific maintenance that needed. But uh, perceptually, we understood that the vehicle will never operate by himself. So you will need to uh, make the uh, best uh, 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 balance point between the uh, amount of crew members that will be able to handle all the team uh, in uh, maintenance uh, issues, not only maintenance, also uh, who's going to be uh, in charge uh, over the night when everybody is sleeping. And there's a variety of uh, crew procedures that need to be uh, handled. And for each one of them, we will need to choose what is the uh, number of crew members that need to handle the group. And then we can decide what will be the number of crew members that operate specific vehicle. By the way, we choose the number of two. It's not a dramatic uh, plug number the concept that the fact that we can uh, make a combined crew of human crew members and uh, a, a computer or system to, uh, that uh, helps them in in variety of uh, tasks that can be held auto autonomically and this is a shared crew uh, the human interface that needs to be very simple for the operators that they can have everything on their on their screen they can have their personal uh, 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 screen that they can choose uh, what they want to focus in. They can bring any information that they want to have uh, on their personal screen. The f this human interface is a concept that can be held with two crew members or can be held in the tanks that we have today that have four crew members, but now they can do much more because they can bring much more capabilities, autonomous capabilities to the crew. So. We have driver in the tank. If he have this system, driving will be much easier for him. He doesn't get he can, tired. Yeah, he doesn't get tired, and he can be uh, uh, open for uh, much more tasks that the commander can give him to support the, the guys in the in the turret. So, it's it's the 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 concept is to combine autonomous capabilities with robotic crew member working as a team with human. Uh, members, I think that was the main things that we uh, checked here. The 
two crew members, it's not, it didn't come from God. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. decided. <laughs> Uh, let's talk a little bit about the protective characteristics. So at the moment, uh, Raphael's Carmel concept is provided with a number of armaments and the trophy active protection system uh, as protection. Are there any plans to integrate, um, for example, explosive reactive armor as a protection solution? Or do you think the systems you have are adequate? I think that uh, what we have in a uh, trophy, and you can see it here on the 30 millimeter uh, Samson uh, remote control weapon system that we have in Rafael, uh, give us a new uh, opportunities, uh, not only on the protective side of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, warfare, also to the uh, maneuver and to the. Uh, uh, attack capabilities. I have the privilege to command the armor core of the IDF on the Operation Defensive Shield of 2014. It was the first time that we operate with a full brigade with a, with a trophy on the Merkava 4. What we figure out that trophy, uh, beside the fact that it saved lives of many of my uh, 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 crew members, it also gave the, the, in the technical level, it also gave the tank commander an option to detect the ATGM, uh, that weapon that was uh, shooting on him. So as soon as Trophy detect the enemy, it was immediately uh, pointed on his uh, screen where the enemy is. And now he can immediately put his main gun on this target. Although he can't see it with his eyes, he know very precise where the enemy is and shoot immediately to this point, it might won't stop the first uh, uh, shoot that will be uh, stopped by the trophy, but it will not allow this uh, ATGM crew to shoot this, the next, uh, the next uh, ATGM. Mm -hmm. So that was in the uh, technical crew level. But further than this, we figure out that the battalion that have trophy on it felt much more comfortable to maneuver in a uh, a lot of uh, enemy street because he felt that he is more protected. He didn't uh, forgot all the tactics that he knows, but he felt much comfort when we had an immediate situation that the battalion commander need to respond. He just took the battalion and drive through in the most quickest way to respond to this uh, action. And by the way, I also felt that in the high level of decision, we felt much more comfortable to maneuver with this brigade to the middle of Gaza because we knew that the threat is a little much lower than what we have from the uh, ATGMs. And uh, this is why I said that on one hand this is a uh, protective system, but I feel that it's much stronger uh, uh, a lethality capability because you can maneuver very fast, you feel much more comfortable to maneuver and it can bring you to position that you wouldn't go if you didn't have the trophy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good bit of op operational insight there. So with the Carmel project there have been many uh, recent developments in mobility technology such as hybrid electrical drive systems, composite rubber tracks, is uh, Raphael looking currently at integrating any of these technologies into the Carmel project? As I said in the beginning, we see the vehicle as a center of capabilities. So we integrate into the uh, vehicle variety of uh, new technologies that we develop in Raphael. For example, you can see the Firefly here that we just uh, integrate a uh, uh, pod that you can see in the left that was attached to the vehicle and uh, we launch the Firefly from the vehicle and immediately send his, uh, uh, the site of the, of the Firefly to the uh, user's uh, uh, interface. And then the vehicle can uh, 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 deal with threats beyond line of sight in the level of a uh, uh, few kilometers and he can have a complete situation awareness of the village before he gets in. The other thing we uh, uh, integrate in was the Spike missile uh, capabilities. Spike family is very known and uh, there are uh, uh, more than 30 countries that use uh, many different uh, spikes, the uh, line of sight uh, uh, LR2, but also non-line of sight that give the vehicle an option to deal with uh, the enemy that he's going to meet 
uh, in the village or in his uh, operation area 25 kilometers before. And uh, you see that over the remote control weapon system, we have integrate uh, kind of a, 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 a pod that you can choose to have uh, spike missiles on it, or you can use Firefly on it. And uh, there are many more capabilities that we understand that we can operate from the vehicle now. As long as you have the simple uh, uh, integration uh, technology, as long as the human interface, the way that you operate it is simple enough, you can integrate all those capabilities, Trophy, Firefly, spike missiles and put above it all the artificial intelligence and all the computer capabilities that you can bring and get that's makes the armor vehicle no longer just a main gun now it's a real system that can bring a much better performance it can help the commander to uh, to held and to bring into the maneuver to the ground maneuver variety of capabilities and i think this is uh, the I will not say revolution, but this is the evolution of the, of the vehicle and this is where we need to take it. The armored vehicle is still the main powerful uh, 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 weapon system that the commander have, but now he can bring much more with these capabilities. In terms of uh, further dates to watch out for, can you provide our audience with any further planned de dates or any date by which you plan to see a completed prototype? Uh, there, are, there are a variety of programs that are running today in uh, many countries. We uh, heard about... Uh, uh, Sorry, on, on Carmel specifically. Uh, the, uh, we are uh, uh, discussing the next step of uh, Carmel with uh, the MOD. And uh, we understand that uh, the next step we need to take the uh, one vehicle that we demo uh, last time and make sure that we make a group of Carmels and to integrate them with variety of uh, unmanned capabilities, robots and drones and everything. I believe in the next uh, uh, two or three years we will uh, make sure that uh, we are moving from one vehicle into company or even battalion capability that based on few Carmels few crew members and a lot of unmanned capabilities around it. Thank you very much.